You have two choices to skip death, being cryogenically frozen and waking up years in the future, or becoming a cyborg, where your organic material is infused with a robotic body. Tough decision, huh? Let's break these options down. Hi, my name is Eric, and this is Time Skipper. Today, we're going to break down cryonics versus cyborgs, and which one makes more sense. We'll give you all the information you need to know and how you can make the impossible possible. What are they? Let's first describe what they are. Cryonics involves keeping your physical body to prevent it from degrading after death, putting you in a cryonic sleep, whereas becoming such a cyborg entails replacing or integrating your physical body with some artificial parts. It may sound a little complex and contradicting, making it harder to digest, but the two of them share the same objective. It is to lengthen your life. Come to think about it, if you are in an emergency, then you suddenly need to replace a body part. To prevent it from dying, you need to integrate a mechanical or bionic part into your body. Or if things get out of hand and to prevent you from dying is to freeze you after death, relying on the future advancement of medicine in hopes of repairing or reviving you in the future. The essentials. There are three essential things to discuss in relation to deciding a cryonic or cyborg future. Number one, certainty. The only problem with cryopreservation would be that not even a single thing can give you assurance about this technique. It all depends on how the advancement of medical technology finds its way to cryopreservation. When are the patients under cryogenic sleep actually awake? How are they gonna be revived? What if something unforeseen happened? No one knows quite yet, however, it is becoming very close. While crowd preservation is quite busy waiting for the advancement of medical technology, the procedure of becoming a cyborg is slowly making its way to the top. Bionic limbs, neobladder, urinary bladder replacement, corpora cavernosa, penile implantation, auditory implants for deaf individuals, and artificial pancreas are only a few cyborg organs developed so far. However, regardless of how remarkable the fast advancement in bionic organs is, there is just no saying whether or not biotechnology can be able to offer a fixing or alternative resolution to all crucial human organs in the near future. Even if they could provide that kind of alteration, what would you sacrifice in return? Number two, technological maturity. Throughout the 1950s, the very first sperm cryonics method was established. James Bedford became the first individual to be cryopreserved 55 years ago. Further developments are needed, such as less toxic cryoprotectants to ensure successful vitrification process, and techniques to overcome other revival obstacles, such as thermal stress and damage due to lack of oxygen. There aren't all rainbows and cupcakes for cyborgs as well. As previously said, a variety of artificial system implementation is currently possible. However, the scope of the bionic products assortment is still quite limited. However, with fast development into artificial organs and 3D biomaterials, significant organs including the heart, kidney, lungs, brains, and eyeballs will have to endure another two or three years. Number three, immortality. Is it possible for cryopreservation to make the impossible possible by making humanity immortal once the advancement hindrances have been overcome? Hypothetically, of course. The cryonics concept implies that science and medicine will eventually come up with an answer to the dilemma of longevity. Practitioners are able to reverse serious illnesses and mortality in the distant future. At this point, they may contemplate unlocking the cryogenic chambers and returning everyone of the cryogenic patients back to life free of fear of death. Furthermore, transforming into a cyborg would be a possible scenario to immortality. However, what type of eternal afterlife? Suppose cryonics promises a potential population made up of immortals, but genuine. In that case, flesh and blood humans. Immortal cyborgs, on the other hand, might sound absurd with a mechanical heart, a camcorder for an eyeball, and cloud computers for a brain. We might be startled to learn that these two prospective worlds aren't all that dissimilar. Cryopreserved physical bodies may have no other option but to be resurrected using cyborg biotechnology. The ultimate choice. Conclusion. Let's address the question first, which makes more sense. Cryonics or becoming a cyborg? The answer is both. But why? 
When one is younger, one attempts to slow down the progression by following all of the aging techniques available, from sporadic eating to anti-aging multivitamins and physical exercise. However, your body will inevitably continue to age, and you may sustain accidents, as well as some organs may cease to operate effectively. That is the point at which someone would consider turning to cyborg technology in order to extend their life. A wise time skipper should follow up with the market possibilities and improve whenever the opportunity presents itself. Whether that be Google eyewear, a cybernetic implant, or nanomachines, you'd eventually get to be a cyborg. Either way, no matter what. It really does depend on the timeline you belong to. It's very possible that the future holds extremely promising technological advancements as radical life extension has been predicted in the next 20 years. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for tuning in to Time Skipper. We have a few questions for you to think about. Would you become a cyborg? How would you upgrade your body? Or maybe there are already some cyborgs out there watching us. Hello. Tell us about your experience in the comments below. As always, if you enjoy our videos and would like to stay updated, please click on the links below to like and subscribe. Once again, this is Eric from Time Skipper. We'll see you next time.